let me start this conference with saying a city that invests in culture will perform on the end economically better, far better than other cities who don't. Uh, that a city like mine or yours has to invest in culture I already knew for years. But why? Why? What are the reasons that you need to? I was searching for this answer on this question for over 20 years and to be honest I'm still searching. I have found some answers uh, but not all. The answers I found I want to share with you today and I'm curious to know your answers on this question and this is the only and main reason why I wanted to be organized this conference and I want to thank Laurent Thieu and his colleagues, Jens, Wolfgang and all the others, that they have fulfilled my wish, having organized for the Committee of the Region a conference on the item, what is the importance for cities and regions to invest in culture. Because I'm convinced, fully convinced, in the Netherlands we say wholly convinced, uh, that that cities and regions that do invest in culture, in sports and education, on the end will perform better in economic terms and in terms of safety, security. This uh, thesis is based on my own experiences, being a mayor for over 30 years. Um, but it is based on several international surveys. Five words, five items, five policy sectors. Culture, sports, education, economics and security. If you invest in the first three, this will promote the last two. If you do, investing in culture, sports and education, this does raise employment, does raise the amount of jobs, it raises the security in your cities. Um, and I'm uh, fully aware that a lot of you have written something or the whole book of Richard Florida, The Rise of the Creative Class of 2002, in which he says if a city or a region is able to attract the creative class to its city, then this makes the difference. This really makes the difference. It makes the difference why this innovative class with a boundless imagination is uh, um, bringing into our cities and regions vitality and dynamics. And these vitality and dynamics brings is, are crucial for growth in quantity and in quality. It brings in economic terms visitors to our cities and regions. It brings uh, investments, companies and labor forces, uh, well-educated labor forces. And in social terms, it brings social cohesion and less uh, criminality. But, ladies and gentlemen, dear colleagues, there are more reasons why a city needs to invest in culture, 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 in sports and education. I'm a mayor of a middle-sized Dutch city with a difficult name to pronounce, Sertogenbosch, uh, but uh, the soccer team is called Den Bosch. Uh, so you may say Den Bosch. It's the city of Euronymous Bosch, where he has born and died. In 2016, we'll be we will commemorate his, his dad for uh, 500 years. But I experienced that if a city is able to let all the youngsters finish their schools, native youngsters and immigrants, then this is the best antidote 
against unemployment. And if in your city you are able to bring youngsters to sports, this is the best antidote against hanging around, vandalism or criminality. A, a recent survey in the Netherlands said that one year extra going to school decreases 20% of youth criminality. And if a city, thirdly, uh, is bringing kids, youngsters, adults to culture, this is the best antidote against intolerance and disrespect. Simone Mills, doctor, who I know for a long time, she's going to perform for you, for us, within half an hour, and she has promised me not to go and walk on our tables, uh, because normally she's on stage. Uh, she stated uh, some years ago to me, don't ask the people what investments in culture can bring them, but ask people uh, what it can take away from them. And then her answer was triple. A good book, touching film, uh, a penetrating theater play, a moving poem, a protesting song. These all create doubts. It liberates, quote of Simone, it liberates us, youngsters and adults, from our one prejudices, our fear from our fear for the unusual, our fear for uh, the foreigner, and thirdly, it uh, takes away our uh, too rigid view on the world. Uh, prejudices, fear for the foreigner, and too stiff vision on the world. That's why aesthetic education is so important, next to physical training. Um, aesthetic education and physical training together uh, bring us uh, to a moral education for our children and for ourselves. Um, in the broader sense of Friedrich Schilder, aesthetic education is not, low, uh, not looking to, to art or culture, but it is the art of living together living together harmoniously. And uh, this art of living together harmoniously is a skill everyone can learn. And this learning is not stopping when you reach the age of maturity. Uh, you can practice it, you must practice it lifelong. Ten days ago, in my city, professor social, uh, sociologist, Professor K. Schuit, he was giving a lecture in the former concentration camp of my city, uh, con uh, Concentrationslager Herzogenbusch, a uh, concentration camp uh, nearby the city, on the outskirts of the city. And he said, the best way of transferring moral skills to new generations is by investing in aesthetic education, education, sports, physical and mental training, playing, acting plays together, making music together. So the best way to deal with other people um, is learning by doing together sports or culture, uh, and then with these other people, you um, find out that it is possible to overcome the differences between people. And that's why I have uh, asked Tjerik, Tjerik Visser, to, to perform for us at 12 o'clock in the atrium because he has traveled from Utrecht, the Netherlands, to Istanbul as a student uh, with his caravan, but he didn't have a car. 
And so he had to hitchhike and ask for a car uh, because he wanted to go with his caravan to Istanbul. And he had to wait some days for 56 hours getting a new car. And then he came in Slovenia, I, I, uh, I think, and, and he was a little bit afraid. Uh, I won't tell the end of the story because he must tell. But uh, what it gave to me was that in this Europe of ours, sometimes we are afraid of each other. And what Professor Schuit said 10 days ago, he said, if you make music or you dance together or uh, uh, playing together in Europe with people with different characters and different temper, with different education, with different attitude, skin color or social background, you will overcome it and you will uh, cooperate uh, harmoniously on the end. Mr. Chair, Mrs. Chair, um, transferring, transferring moral education into moral intelligence, that's the point. Transferring moral education into moral intelligence. Moral education creates courageous people. Courageous people that um, dare to distrust their own right, that dare to stand up against injustice, that dare to fight for justice, for tolerance, for respect. And I think, ladies and gentlemen, that Europe, the European Union, needs courageous citizens and brave politicians to to believe in a new positive story about Europe. Um, and what I wanted to share with you is let us, representatives of local and regional authorities, let us start in our cities and regions making this narrative to begin with making room for the culture and crea creative sectors. I want to welcome you all in the name of the President of the Committee of the Regions, and I want to thank you for your attention.